So guys, I'll be teaching us how to make a a cow neck top. The last time I taught um, cow neck, I actually did the simple cow neck top. So this time I'm going to do the draped cow neck. That is the one that is pleated. So the cow neck I'm going to be doing, you are going to be seeing it right there on your screen. So that is actually the cow neck top that I'll be doing. So the first thing we need, we need our measurement. So we have the measurement. The measurement, we are working with a bust of 48, the round under bust of 40, the under bust length of 18, the navel of is uh, 44, round hip of 50, and the blouse length of 29. Okay, so that's what we are going to be using for this particular blouse. So the first thing you we normally do whenever you want to cut anything is to fold your material. Do you understand? Is the folding. So, but I would also like to let you know that this type of um, cutting, you know, normally we cut the front first. Now use the front and cut the back. So, but this time around, we are going to cut the back first before we use it to, we now use the back to cut the front. Do you understand? So the other way. So that's what we are going to be doing. Like I said, you have to fold. For you to fold, you will be working with the highest circumference, the highest measurement shape. Now the highest measurement is 50, that is the hip. So 50 divided by four, which is going to be giving us 12.5. So please, I want you to add extra two inches to it. I what I mean, I mean just two inches to it. Do you understand? So 12.5 plus two is going to be giving us 14.5. So that means as you be folding your uh, pattern paper like this, please, I would advise you to do something. Don't start cutting this with your normal material. Cut with pattern paper first. Do you guys understand? Cut with pattern paper first. So see what I mean? When you fold like this, all I will need is to make sure that your material is how many? I say 12.5 12, 12 plus 2 is 14.5. So make sure that your folding is what? 14.5. Hope you guys are seeing it. Make sure it is 14.5. Now, but there's something I'm going to be doing. Because I'm actually working with pattern paper, I'm not going to be kind of wasting my paper. Do you understand? So I want to stick it this way. But if you are making, if you are constructing your own, please advise you to do it this way. Do you understand? Just do it this way. Okay, now look at what I said. Let me do it here for all of us to see. Now let me measure it out, guys. 14.5. Okay, 14.5. Make sure you mark it down. 14.5. Remember what I said? We are first going to be drafting the back. Then after we use it to draft the front. So the reason why I don't really have to fold this paper into two is because at the end of the day, I'm not going to be sewing this paper. Rather, I'm going to be using this paper, put it on material. Then my material will be folded into two. Then when I cut it out, at the end of the day, it's the material that I'll be sewing with. So that's why I don't need to do it here. I will end up wasting the pattern paper. So all you have to do is to cut it off. Then after you are done cutting it off, the second thing we mostly consider while um, folding is what the length of the top. Do you understand? Remember I said the first is the second highest circumference, which was um, the hip divided by four plus extra two inches. Then the second is the top length. The top length is 29 inches. So all you have to do is to make sure that your paper is up to 29 plus extra um, folding allowance. That is, the extra folding allowance should be at least 2 inches. That is 29 plus 2 is how many? 31. So make sure that the length is more than 31. So if you like, you can cut it up immediately or you can leave it like that. Okay. Then when we are done, the next thing we are going to be doing now is we are going to be drafting the um, normal basic bodies. Do you understand? It's a normal top. Hope you guys understand. Okay. So let's draft it. In order to draft a normal um, basic bodies, what we need to do is to first of all mark out what we call the vertical measurement. Hope you guys understand vertical measurement, which is from shoulder to the bust length, then from shoulder to the under bust length, from shoulder to the waist length, and from shoulder to the blouse length. So the bust length is 13 inches. That is the bust length. There's something I still want you to do. Place your tape like this again. Then make sure you mark that same pattern. Because I want you to know the reason why we are doing this thing is to make sure that when you are connecting your line will be straight, please. Okay, then now we have gotten the boss length. Let's get to the under boss length. The under boss length is 18 inches. Now make sure you also do the same thing. Mark it out into two. 
Then we have the blouse length. The blouse length is how many? 29 inches. Okay guys, for the sake of this particular tutorial, I'm going to be adding only one inch for the allowance. So making it up to what? 30 inches. So make sure you mark the same thing here. 29 plus 1, making it 30 inches. All you have to do is to take your rule and date, connect. So as you can see, you notice that you don't mark out the waist. For me now, I think it's not necessary to mark out the waist. There's something I usually tell my students. If you mark out the waist and use the waist measurement, please, it is very much okay. Do you understand? But make sure at the end of the day that your measurement is correct. If not, you might get a wrong shape. Do you understand? So the reason why sometimes I don't consider the waist in this case is because, let me tell you the truth, if you measured correctly your under bust and you measured your hip correctly, at the end of the day, when you connect both of them, you are still going to get the correct waist in between the under bust and the round hip. Do you guys understand? Okay. So now we have the shoulder. We have the bust length and we have the under bust length. We have the blouse length and the allowance. allowance. Okay, there's something I also forgot to do. I forgot to mark the hip line. Shane? Yes, please don't forget to mark the hip line. It's very, very nice. Sometimes why it seems as if we forget it is that is because the hip line is mostly where some person's blouse do end. So sometimes we call it the blouse length. But for the sake of this tutorial, you notice that the blouse length is 29. Why the hip line is 27 inches. Look at it. Are you seeing it? 27 inches. So take your rule and also do what? Connect. So we have the hip length. Okay, so now we are done marking out these things. Next thing we are going to be doing now is that we are going to be constructing the ammo. But before we do that, we first have to do the um, shoulder sloping. Do you understand? Now, like I've told my student, I've told you guys, shoulder sloping is, means that no individual here, no, none of your shoulders eh, is straight. Everybody's shoulder is was slanted, that is in a slopey form. Do you understand? So for you to effect it on the glute, all you have to do is the shoulder measurement. The shoulder measurement, which is 18 inches, divided by 2. When you divide it by 2, you'll be getting 9 inches. Hope I'm correct. Now look at it, 9 inches. Are you seeing it? Add extra half inch for to it. This half inch is for the shoulder seam allowance. Do you understand? That is, it is this seam allowance that we use whenever we are fixing sleep on our arm Do you guys understand? Okay. So when you've got it, next thing you need to do is to do what? You need to slope down to one inch. Like I've told you guys, I usually tell you guys something. The sloping for female is usually from one inch to two inches. Why the sloping for male is from two inches to three inches. But for the sake of this tutorial, we're we'll sloping with one inch so now you've gotten this slope point next thing you need is what we call the standard neck weight now this standard neck weight i don't know really how to explain this standard neck weight is the distance from the left part of the neck to the right part of the neck do you understand now i humanly use three inches for everybody this is the what i call the standard neck weight. this three inches it means that when you expand it it becomes what six inches do you understand okay Please, this standard neck width does not mean, it does not, like, it's not compulsorily where you affect your neck width in any clothes you are making. It is only specifically for what? Sloping. Okay, now we've gotten this point and we've gotten this point. It is now time for us to slope. Now you have to do is to connect like this from here down to here and do what? Slope. Then, we are now getting to another stage. The next stage now is to fully construct the ample. Now, in order for us to construct the ample, you guys should remember we've already measured the shoulder. This is the point. And how did we get it? By dividing the shoulder by 2. 18 divided by 2 is 9. 9 plus half is what? 9 and a half. Please, I want you to take it down exactly. Are you seeing it? Take it down. 9 plus half is what? 9 and a half. Now, take your ruler and they connect. It is compulsory you do that. Are you seeing it? Okay, take your rule and connect. I know some of us will be asking, where exactly are we going to stop? And that question is also the same thing as, what is the armhole length of this particular person? So now in order to explain where you are going to stop, which is also the armhole length, all you have to do is use exactly whatever you have here, shoulder divided by 2 plus half. Are you seeing it? Do the same thing here. Now look at it. Shoulder divided by 2 plus half is 9 and a half. Are you seeing it? This is actually 9 and a half. If you also take your flexible tape, it is the same thing, nine and a half. Are you seeing? So at this point is where you are going to stop your straight line. Then make sure you take your rule and mark a horizontal line. 
thereby you'll be getting this vertical and the horizontal intercepting at one place are you seeing it now this part that is intercepting we are not done um constructing the armhole are you seeing it this part that the, these two are intercepting is the part that we are going to use to construct the armhole fully now there's something that we usually have we usually have whenever you see a standard armhole we usually have this curve like this are you seeing it now how do we really get this curve you get this curve by at this point place your tape diagonally place your tape at this point you seeing it diagonally place your tape mark out how many one inch are you seeing it when you mark out this one inch next thing you are going to be doing is you ask yourself where is it going to start curving through here now whatever you have here we have nine and a half the midpoint of nine and a half that means nine and a half divided by two is going to be giving us what that should be four three quarter are you seeing it so by me looking at it, you notice that this is the part this thing is starting from look at it the curve is going to gradually start from here then connect to this one are you seeing it then back to this very one are you guys seeing hope it's very clear now there's another thing we call the armhole effect now the truth there is that the armhole effect is usually done in front of every dress and unfortunately looking at this very one is it the front part of the dress no this is the back part remember what i said we are going to be drafting the back part first so this is the back part we are drafting i know some of us will ask me why is it that we don't have zipper allowance is I don't want to use zipper allowance on this dress. Do you understand? Like, it is a free top. Now, in case you want to use a zipper allowance, you want to put zip at the back, please don't just play, start marking out your measurement from this point. All you have to do is to mark out your zipper allowance. The zipper allowance is one inch, mark out to one inch, all through that, then connect with a room. Do you understand? If it is two inches, mark it out and connect with a room. Hope you guys understand. Okay. So the next thing we are going to be doing now is we are going to be marking out the back neck. Now, in order to mark out the back neck, it is at this moment you ask yourself, what should be my neck width, like original neck width. What I mean by this is not the standard neck width that we use in sloping. Hope you guys understand. The neck width I'm talking about now is how wide should the dress neck be? So now, you now have to decide on your own. For me, what I'm going to be using for this particular person is going to be nine inches so we are going to be using nine inches that is nine divided by two why are we dividing by two because already we are folding our material into two okay that is 4.5 are you seeing it okay now this 4.5 we are going to use our ruler connect it like this in order to create a line like this are you seeing it now next thing we are going to be doing is the neck depth the neck depth of the bag please i want you to know is that Looking at the picture you can see on the screen now, like the cow neck, you notice that cow necks, the front usually comes down. Do you understand? So that means anything that is like that, especially like the necks, that the front usually comes down. The back neck is usually what? High neck. The back neck is usually a high neck. Do you guys understand? It's not low. If the front is very low, the back should be what? High. Please. Let not the front to be very low and the back is low at the same time. It's going to mess up the dress. When you pull it like this, everything will just show from front. You understand? So thereby, the neck, back neck we are going to be using will be two inches. Okay, just measure two inches from here. Are you seeing it? Two inches. The next thing you are going to be doing is to connect your curve. How do you get this back neck curve? It's the same thing we did here. Are you seeing it? Diagonally slant from this edge. Are you seeing it? Mark one inch, then connect. Is as you can see, all this connection that I'm doing with my free hand, you can also make use of a an armhole curve. We have different kinds of curve for this. Do you understand? Then you can also use it for the. You can also make use of your French curve, or you can even make use of a broomstick, which I normally use. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm making use of my free hand. So connect it like this. As you can see. Now look at the back neck. Here. Are you seeing it? Okay. So after this next thing we are going to be doing, we are going to be imputing the horizontal measurement. So let's impute the horizontal measurement. We start from the bust. The round bust which we have here is 48 inches. 48 divided by 4, which is going to be giving us 12 inches. All you have to do is to add extra 2 inches to it. Hope I'm correct. Add extra 2 inches to it. Okay. Then let's get to the under bust. The under bust which we have here is 40 inches 40 inches divided by 10 is going to be divided by 4 is going to be 10 inches next thing you still need to do is to add extra 
two inches to it. Let's get to the hip, guys. The hip which we have here is we have hip of 50, so that means what we are going to have there is 12.5. Are you saying it? Then plus extra two inches. Okay, look at it. The reason why it's remaining exactly two inches is because that's what we folded with. We folded with the hip and added extra two inches to it. Okay, so that's it. So all you have to do is to connect. So in order for you to connect, look at it, guys. It's very simple. From here, you connect down to here. Uh, down to the hip. From here, connect down to here and down to the hip. So the next thing you are going to be doing now is, look at it, as you notice, we started connecting from here. Now, I know there's this mistake some persons really do around this side, is I want you to know, this side does not have a specific point where it stops. Wherever this one stops is where this one is going to stop. Hope you guys know. Look at it. If this one is stopping here, see, look at it. Connect it like this. Are you seeing it? That's how to connect it. For those that are connecting like this, please, this is not the shape of ample. Do you understand? This is not the, the shape of this particular place. Wherever this one stops at the boss, just extend it. Even if you want to extend it a little bit, it's okay. But don't make it to be pointing like this. Okay. So as you can see, we are kind of done. Next thing I'm going to be doing now, which is not compulsory, is I'm going to be giving a shape to my blouse. Do you understand? A shape at the down. So in order to give this shape at the down, please, it's your choice depending on how many inches you are going to use. Now, for the sake of this particular tutorial, I'm going to be using three inches. Are you seeing it? Now look at the three inches from the allowance down to wherever. Do you understand? See, look at it here. From here, place your tape. Are you seeing it? Three inches. Now, I'm marking it out here. The next thing we are going to be doing is Get the total measurement from here to here, which what I have here is 14.5. Are you seeing it? Then get the midpoint. The midpoint is the midpoint is that should be how many? 17, 7 one quarter. That should be 7 one quarter. Look at it, mark it out. Remember what I did from here. I measured three inches. Please, you can actually use two inches if you want. One inch, just depending on how deep you want your curve to be. Do you understand? So next I just have to get the main point of from here to here. So this is it. So all you have to do is to connect. Are you seeing it? Just connect down to here and that's it. Are you seeing it? Please make sure you position where while connecting it. So at the end of the day, we are done constructing the blouse. All you have to do is to cut it out. That is just what you need to do. Cut it out, then use it and cut the front part. So as you can see, I am done with this particular one. Are you seeing it? Okay, so I'm going to be using this bag in order to cut the front part. This one is for the back. So we are going to be working on the front part. So front part, you can actually make use of your fabric immediately and cut it. Do you understand? You can use this one, make it of a fabric immediately to cut your front part. Okay, guys, so we are about cutting out the front part. Front part is really the real, like, it makes the real, uh, what is it called, the cow neck. Do you understand? So, in order to cut it out, all what you need to do is to, you know, the same way you cut out pieces for the front, for the back, just do the same thing. But in this case, this one, the back, the, the one you are cutting out now should be longer than the back, which you cut out previously. Now, it should be longer with 10 inches. 10 inches. Now, for those that really want to know how to come about, how to go about all these stuff, like the 10 inches, you understand? Some of us were asking whether is it fixed. The truth there is that if I tell you it is fixed, at the end of the day, it will still work out for each and every one of us. Do you understand? But I want to still give you a little kind of guide. Now, this 10 inches, how I really got mine is by whatever that is remaining here. Are you seeing it? After marking out your neck, whatever that is remaining here, times it by two, or times it by three. Do you understand? That is the formula for me. Whatever that is remaining here, times it by two or three. Now, this 10 inches is also in accordance to the amount of pleat which you need at the shoulder part. Do you understand? It is in accordance to the amount of pleat which you need at the shoulder part. Please, I want you to know that. So, that's why I'm using 10 inches. So, all I have to do now is look at it. Look at it. Now, remember what I said I, I actually did? I'm using 10 inches. So, this 10 inches, it is not fixed based on this my own tutorial. 
it is gotten from whatever you have here times it by two or by three do you understand let's say your own what you have here now is three you can times it by three three times three is what nine do you understand let's say what you have here now is five like i have five the bigger it is the smaller you reduce the multiplication if you have like five times it by two if you have like three times it by three do you understand so that's how it goes if you have like 3.5 you can times it by three you understand or by two and a half so it's by from two to three that's the multiplication you are going to be doing okay so look at it guys so let, let me mark out 10 inches which is what i'm using now 10 inches so when you are done marking it out all you need to do is take your rule and then connect so as you can see when you connect remaining here is exactly the left of my blouse are you seeing it okay so that is how i expect you guys to do your own so all i have to do now is there's something i still want you to know you guys know that there's no way you can finish making this um, cow neck that you are not going to there's no way you finish making this cow neck that you're not going to hem do you understand you are going to hem this i know you guys will still understand what i mean by hemming this side so what i'm about doing now is i'm marking out what i'm using for hemming. so i either use two inches or three inches for my hemming do you guys understand i either use what two inches or three inches for my hemming but for the sake of this tutorial let me use 2.5 so all i have to do is to connect that okay now here is for hemming and here is the remaining one for the pleats do you guys understand then from here to here is for the dress itself so next thing i'm going to be doing now guys look at it this part is very very tricky it is not the same thing anywhere like on if you like go anywhere and check it on the internet it's not the same thing people have different ways of getting this place now look at it all like, you know normally when we want to trace we keep it like this now this time around we are not going to be keeping it like this we are going to be keeping it like this are you seeing it connect this one to here are you seeing it connect it back here that is what i want you guys to do now look at it look at it some of us usually make this thing to be SS, the, the front one to be SS. But there's a kind of dress I want. And I want to make this into be cow neck, and yet the body is going to balance on our. You understand? It's going to really balance. If you want it to be fitted, it's your choice to make it be fitted. Let it not be like it's cow neck, and at the end of the day, everywhere it's bogus. Okay. So all you have to do is place it like this. Now look at it very well, please. I want you to look at this thing very well. Place it like this. Then look, look mark it out are you seeing it mark it out mark it out when you are done marking it out here hmm? okay i did not really test it down very well then see mark here when you get around this point are you seeing it in between the other boss and the boss when you get around this point please stop because there's something we are going to be doing now we are going to be placing it very well do you understand place it down very very well okay and as you are placing it down please don't make this mistake. Eh? See, as you are placing it down, just make sure you move like this. Look at it. Are you seeing it? That it is still within, like both of them are still within the same point. In fact, if you really want to understand this thing, what would be your guide if you actually cut the same way I'm cutting is that here has to be equal. Do you understand? That's the stuff that should be your guide. So when we you are done now, look at it guys. When you are done, next thing I want you to do is to still gradually connect it down. I know it might not be like that perfect. Do you guys understand? But just try and connect it. Connect it. Some persons, like I said, some persons have different ways that they do get this thing. But this is my own method. To tell you guys the truth, I'm making it in a way that it will still be fitted on your body and at the same time it will give you a perfect cow neck. So all you have to do is to use your scissors and then cut out. This is actually the front that you are cutting out. We are done cutting the front part. We are really done cutting the front part. The next thing we are going to be doing now is look at it. This should be done on the material. Make sure you hem, overlock this part. Please, I want you to know something. Don't you know that on material, this thing is like two. We folded material into two. I want you to know. I'm still going to do it on the fabric now. So, guys, the next thing we are going to be doing now is are you seeing it from here to here? All you have to do is to cut off something like this. I will still show us what this thing actually means. Are you seeing it? Just cut it off like that. I know some of us might be asking at which measurement, like, look at it, let me replace it back again. Have you seen it? Some of us might be asking at which measurement. See, please, from here to here, at least two inches. 
Are you seeing it? From here to here, at least two inches. So that is how you are going to be cutting it. So at the end of the day, all you need to do is to fold like this. Are you seeing it? Okay, so let's take it and then cut on our fabric. Then I'll show us how to do the plating and the sewing, everything at the same time. So guys, as you can see, I'm done preparing the, the front part. Are you seeing? I had to sew out this side. Okay. Though I was waiting for the overlocking, that is the video. But I couldn't wait for it. I have to sew it. So you can either whip, overlock, or you sew. Do you understand? So after you are done, um, you remember the one you folded out? Do you understand? Iron it out like I've done now. So next thing you need to do is look at it. This is the front part. Now let's use this as the back part. Although we still have the back part, you guys understand. But why I'm not going to be using it now to be placing on this is because you know this paper is kind of thicker. So I'm going to be using it to like prepare the front part. Now let's start. Remember, I want you to know something. The, our armhole originally started from here. Are you seeing it? Down to this side on the front part. Then the back part from here down to this side. Now look at it. It means that look at the armhole here. Are you seeing it? This is really the ammo. Then the other ones remaining, you guys are going to see how we are going to work on this. So what we are going to be doing now is, look at it guys, from here, look at it. From here, we are going to be connecting. Are you seeing it? Let me place it down very well. Are you seeing it? From here, we are going to be placing it. Now look at it, it's from here we are going to be uh, bleating it. Please, I want you guys to know something. Look at how it works. This one here, are you seeing it? This one here, why this one is here. Are you seeing it? The moment you place one here, you place another one here. So let's start placing. This I want you to also know something. If you place it equally like this, it's not going to work. Are you seeing it? Because at the end of the day, when you are plating, this is actually going down. So that means you really need to lift it up like this. Do you understand? Like lift it up like up to like one inch to 1.5 inches. And I also want you to know that it is from here you're also going to adjust here. Do you understand? If you want it to come up more, all you have to do is to, are you seeing it? let it come up more from here okay so now let's start guys let's start now you also have to note whatever you are using here now all i have to do now is to let me use pin and they go to this particular one okay next thing we are going to be doing is i'm going to be pleating another one are you seeing it that is what i'm actually doing now pleating another one okay please as you are pleating you have to check like how do i say it everything you have do you understand I, so you have to calculate it and know how many pleats you are going to do for me now i'm going to be doing like three pleats so i will check it like this first are you seeing it pleat another one then i check by pleating another one okay check by pleating another one then at the end of the day you notice that the armhole now will be equal this is how it's supposed to be okay so let's go we are still on the second part let's go let's pleat I want you to know that however you pleat it here is the same way you are going to pleat on the other one. Okay, so guys, as you can see, we are done with this very side. So now let's do the same thing here. Please remember what I said. You always have to open up here. Check how many inches you have here. That is something we are going to use. How many do we have here? Almost two inches. Are you seeing it? So the same thing we are going to do here. Let's do that. Two inches. Place it like this. Two in look at what I mean by two inches. So as for everything to be equal. Are you seeing it? Two inches. You pin it first. Okay. Now check the second one. Check the second one. How many inches? Please look at it. The plate is coming towards this way. The same thing as this. So that both of them will match. Check what you have from here to here. Are you seeing it? It's the same thing that you're going to have here. Look at what I mean, guys. Whatever you have here, one inch, is the same thing that's going to be remaining here. Do you understand? We are done. As you can see now, I want you to really look at this. You now, look at it very well. I want you to look at it. When you wear it, it's going to really come out very, very well. Okay, let me show. Are you seeing it, guys? Yeah. This is it. Okay, so 
Next thing we are going to be doing now is, because making this, we, you have to be very, very careful. Next thing we are going to be doing now is, we are going to be stitching on top of this. Do you guys understand? Take a stitch and hold it first, so as not to make a mistake. Hold it with the stitch. Then at the end of the day, um, you are going to cut off the SS. Cut off the SS. Then, the final thing we are going to be doing now is, take it and fix at the back part of our dress. This is the back part of our dress. Are you seeing it? Then you will not have to complete your clothes by closing the sides and hemming the down. Also hemming the ample. Then, next thing you do is to cut off the SS. Then when you are done, next thing you need to do is to gently loosen it out from this paper. You guys should know that this is just a paper. That means it will be perforated. Do you understand? It's going to perforate itself. Thereby, you will lose it out without the stitch going out from the fabric. Okay guys, as you can see, the final thing you need to do here before connecting it to the back part is to weave this side. Are you seeing it? You have to overlock this very side you are seeing here now. Okay, you have to go and weave it. Weave it out. Just the same way we've done on this side. That's the same thing you are going to do now. So guys, before you join it, all you have to do is to use a bias, a bias tape or use the material to cut a bias tape. They use it and cover the back part first before you can now join the shoulders. Okay, so let's do that. So guys, after that, you now join the front with the back. Take one side of it. Okay guys, as you can see, we're almost done here. Next thing you need to do is to close the sides. Since I'm making a sleeveless top, so you now have to close the side. Depending on how free you want it to be, determines what you are going to be closing with. Then the final thing I'm going to be doing now is to be I'm going to be hemming the damp part. That is what I'm. So you start from one side of the dress, open it up. Because at the end of the day, we are still going to iron everything out so as to achieve a very neat finish so in order to hem it it is that you is either you hem just once or you hem double please whichever one you feel that will be very very okay for you now for the sake of this particular story i'm going to be hemming single just once The final thing remaining here is to either fold the um, the armhole or to is either fold the armhole or to pipe it. Do you guys understand? I think that's the only thing remaining here to fold it or to pipe it.